Hey guys, welcome back to Nomad Studies. Today I'm going to give you all some tips on how to structure and write to your UCAS personal statement. I will be basing it off how I approached writing mine back in 2017. So this will be a very STEM specific personal statement video. To start off, I thought I'd give you a summary of my UCAS application journey so that you'll know how well this sort of personal statement was received. I will then talk about why my personal statement was structured the way it is. Then I will end this video with some tips. Feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps in the description below if anything doesn't pique your interest. I applied for chemistry at five different universities back in early October of 2017. I was given conditional offers at Bath, St Andrews and Durham without an interview, a conditional offer at Imperial after an interview, and a rejection from Oxford after three interviews. I could make a video talking about my interview experiences at Imperial and Oxford if people are interested. Anyway, I structured my personal statement based on the advice I garnered during talks given by admissions tutors at Oxford and Imperial. They both generally agreed on three things. One, the personal statement must show commitment to and a genuine interest for the subject you're applying for. Two, the personal statement should be at least 75% about academic interests. And three, please don't read why chemical reactions happen, because if you aren't able to talk about it during the interview due to a lack of understanding, then it will reflect badly on you. Taking their advice to heart, this is the personal statement I end up submitting on UCAS after 12 iterations. So first off, let's talk about the introduction. The aim of it is to catch the reader's attention. Don't start off with a cliche or famous quote as it won't make you stand out. After hooking in the person reading your personal statement, it's important to stay relevant and concisely explain what got you interested in the course in the first place. Leading off from the introduction, you should continue explaining why you're interested in the course by explaining your motivations for applying through demonstrating your academic interest and knowledge in the subject. I included books and magazines I read on my subject, online courses I did, a chemistry essay competition that I entered, and lastly, a summer program I attended. Examples of other things you could possibly include that I can currently think of are shown here on the screen if you wanted some ideas. The next portion of your personal statement should focus on the transferable skills you have gained from activities not directly relevant to your subject. This paragraph should not be a list of all the things you've done. Make sure you back each activity up with how it has helped you improve in or gain skills you'll need for your course in general. Otherwise, it will just seem irrelevant to the degree subject. For example, if I just stated that I have a grade 6 in piano, it would seem out of place. Therefore, I linked it to time management and myodexterity, which are key skills chemistry students would need to excel in labs. If you have no idea what soft skills to mention for your degree, try googling key skills for your subject's applicants. Last but not least, the conclusion should be only one or two lines long. I mentioned what I looked forward to at university, and reiterated my passion for chemistry. A lot of people also mention their career aspirations. Now that I've gone through what makes up a personal statement, I'm going to give you some tips on actually writing it. The hardest thing about writing a personal statement for me was starting. I would write one sentence of introduction, delete it, then start it again. Then I would perhaps get an introduction done which I thought was decent, go to sleep, wake up the next day, and think it was trash again. As you can probably tell, I was a bit of a perfectionist. I wanted it to be decent the first time round, and especially the introduction, since it would be the university admissions team's first impression of me. So, my first tip would be to not start with introduction, since it's often the most daunting. Hence, my second tip is to try doing this instead to start off. List all of the things you've done or attended over the past four years at school. Events, online courses, summer programs, extra readings, competitions, volunteering, etc. And divide them into two categories, relevant to university subjects versus not relevant to university subjects. For not relevant, try to see if each of them helped you develop a specific skill which could be useful for excelling at university, or doing well in the subject you're applying for. The ones which don't should be removed. For relevant, see which ones you think are unique and isn't something that most other applicants would also write about. Ones which are not worth mentioning should be removed. My third tip is that in each list, 
Circle the thing you think will make you stand out the most compared to other applicants, or proves the point you made most in the introduction. Then try to link that to something so that it flows well. An example of what I mean can be seen in my personal statement. I stated that I was drawn to chemistry because of how it allowed me to explain everyday phenomena in my introduction. I then demonstrated this by mentioning an online course about everyday chemistry that I did in the beginning of the next paragraph. Following from that, I stated my favorite module in the course was about fragrant compounds found in roses, and linked what I learned from that to my A-level course. I also then mentioned how the online course helped me to understand an article that I read in a magazine. Doing something like this is much better than listing random things you did one after another, because it suggests that you were interested in what you learned at school, and then use that information you learned to understand something else you learned not covered in your exam syllabus. My fourth tip is to ignore your character and word count when you make your first draft. It's much easier to cut down later than to write something from scratch. What happened to me was that I wrote too much at first, then cut it down to less than 4,000 characters, and saved that for my first draft. However, after showing it to my chemistry teacher, she ended up cutting out a huge chunk of it, saying that it wasn't relevant to what I was applying for. And instead, to elaborate on what was relevant, if I hadn't deleted all that text in the first draft and saved it as is, it could have saved me much more time and effort. My fifth tip is to reach out to people around you to give their honest opinions about your personal statement. It's often very helpful to get an outsider's point of view on it, even if they aren't doing your subject or understand the process of applying to universities. When you have been working on something for a while, it can be really hard to spot any mistakes made or things you could improve upon. You want as much advice as you can possibly get, but it doesn't mean you have to listen to all of them. If at the end, what someone has commented or tweaked on your personal statement makes it worse in your opinion, then honestly just stick with your gut feeling and ignore their advice, so that you do not have any regrets and are 100% happy with what you end up submitting. My sixth tip is to ask the person who is writing your reference for the UCAS form what they have already mentioned in it. Because what I found was, when I talked to the person writing up my reference, she already mentioned all of the school competitions that I had taken part in, so there was no point in me repeating it in my personal statement. This helped me free up a lot of characters which I thought I didn't have, so that I could talk a lot more about things which I did outside of school. And lastly, this isn't a tip, but here are some resources that I'd like to recommend to you guys, if you're stuck on things you can do to enhance your personal statement as well as ideas on how to write it. And that is the end of my personal statement tips video. I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck with your UCAS application. If you have any questions, feel free to leave in the comments below. And please drop a like and subscribe if this video has been informative for you.